For years, people have been trying to sound the alarm on geoengineering, solar radiation management, solar aerosols, chemtrails, whatever you want to call it. People refuse to talk about it. They just say it's a conspiracy theory. But now with the internet and the, the fact that people all have cameras right there on their phones to be able to record these anomalies in real time, it's getting a little bit more difficult for people who refuse to look up into the sky to deny that there's something curious going on. Well, today we have two guests who are actually recording this and collecting this evidence in real time. Marie Snow and her friend Corey Gunnels live in Chino Valley, Arizona when they noticed mysterious fibers falling from three military aircraft, including a C-130, um, they discovered that hundreds, if not thousands, of these mysterious fibers were collecting uh, all over the natural terrain, all over the power lines, the fence posts, and they reported that these fibers were very thick, thick spider webs, and so they decided to collect them and send in some samples to... Uh, individual labs, as well as giving them to a local news affiliate. And you will not believe the way that that local news affiliate tried to spin this story. So Corey and Marie, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, Corey, can you just describe to us what happened that day? Sure. I, I happened to be standing outside when I heard a, a aircraft, very loud, unusual. And I looked up and coming directly over my property, was a large um, KC-130 that was followed immediately in very close distance by two other planes. And it was at a very low elevation, so it was very loud. I happened to have my cell phone in my hand, so I clicked it to camera and didn't even really have time to focus. Um, I just hoped that I got it in, in a, you know, a shot of it, which I did. Um, and that's what I, what I sent to you. Uh, Maria is a friend of mine who lives about eight miles to the northeast. And that was the direction the planes were headed. So I called her and asked her if she would go outside to see if she could see them. And uh, she did. And then within a few minutes, you know, she said, oh, my, can you see that? Can you see that? And I, I, at that time, I didn't know what she was talking about. And she described that the sky filled with these, what to her looked like long 50-foot raindrops. Um, and um, so within a couple minutes, um, because of the prevailing wind coming west to the southwest, um, my sky filled. Uh, with these long filaments when it came to, to my area. They were about 10 to 20 feet long, um, glim kind of shimmery, like a, like, a, like a cobweb would look, um, although, you know, really long. And it, it, the sky filled, it persisted for about an hour, and these things were catching on all of the, the vegetation and the trees and so forth. So that's how it started. Right, so just covering a swath of area. And you did send me a video that some other uh, geoengineering activists have have dubbed these things chem webs. And I've noticed some of the pictures are, the fibers are a little thicker than yeah. what we're seeing there with those filaments that look very much like, uh, like spider webs. Um, yeah. Were those just kind of clumped together or was it a different, something different that dropped from the planes were, or a different day or? No, there, there were three things happening that day with when the sky filled. There were the long, the long shimmery like uh, filaments. Then um, some of them had were, it would be like a long shimmer with a clump and then long shimmer. And then there were some clumps, just plain clumps. Kind of like as if uh, you, uh, if you have a pet and sometimes they pull a little bit of cotton batting out of a toy. Mm hmm a little fluff piece, there were some of those uh, floating in the air as well. Right. And so, Marie, you decided to collect some of these samples and uh, do some testing, and you also alerted the news media, and you reported that other people also called into the news media to report seeing these fibers floating in the sky. Yes. Yes. I... After I saw this, these fibers falling, I was worried, and I didn't want to touch them with my hand. Anything that falls from the direction of an aircraft can't be a very good thing to breathe or touch. So 
I went in and got some gloves and tried to find a mask, but I couldn't find one. I went back outside. I had a white piece of paper and I rolled it up somewhat and I wound the fibers around the piece of paper over and over. These, these were long fibers. I couldn't even tell you how many minutes I could have kept winding around the paper. I had to break the fiber finally. Wow, so it was a kind of like a thicker fiber that didn't just break apart like a spider it, web would, or it was like a, like a thick spider web? It was very sticky and it was very thick. Mm. And long. And, yes, and, and very long. long. Wow. And I also collected it from the plants, trees, fences, and uh, we had it tested. The fir very first thing we did, both of us did call the EPA. I did reach, um, we're in Region 9, where the headquarters are in San Francisco. And the woman there told me, she said, look, because this is happening in, in real time in Arizona, you need to call someone closer, so call Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. And she gave me an inside name and number, um, as well as the main number for a backup. So that's where we started. And then um, there were many other calls, many other calls to the FAA, to air traffic control, to legislators, um, and then also Marie did contact the media. Yes. We contacted 94 members of legislature. I called um, probably five different uh, news networks, and we did hear back from CBS 5 in Phoenix. And so where are you with that? Any word from the EPA or the FAA or any of these um, politicians, anyone that you were able to get in contact with? Leanne, what I would tell you is that this is kind of a typical story of geoengineering where um, they delicately kind of dance around. And um, we did, I did have a very long conversation with uh, Congressman Gosar's aide. She was really good. And uh, she was uh, going to, you know, get in contact with the EPA. What I can tell you, though, is the story that CBS Channel 5 did really marginalized it. Mm -hmm. um, I asked them to please hold the story until all the facts were in, until our, until our lab, lab tests were returned and so forth, and they chose not to. So um, their story really lacked integrity. And I think you already know that their conclusion, they said that these things were cattle bandages, that um, they looked at it under 40 times microscope and an infrared, which matches kind of a chemical signature to their database. And they said it was flour, gluten, and bacitracin. Uh, that really differs with the tests that we, re we had done at Certified Lab and uh, came back showing high levels of aluminum, barium, and strontium. Right, I have those lab tests here. It was just so shocking how completely different these reports were, and you did ask them to please hold off on, on reporting the story until your lab tests could come in as That's well, correct. so you could show them side by side. They didn't do that. They went ahead with what their theory was, and they even had a very leading uh, photo in the beginning of the report, yeah. someone standing in front of a cotton field or like an opening of, of cotton to already kind of program that predictive programming for whoever is going to watch that report. Oh, this is what you saw that day when everyone called in and noticed that there were things falling from the sky. It was just cotton or, you know, just mysterious right. spider webs. And then they, they end the report saying that the theory is that these are dissolvable cattle bandages. Uh, but that's something that is very easily t verified because you can just go get some samples from cattle yeah. <laughs> to see if they well, match. Yeah, and the other thing is why would your sky fill with 10 to 20 foot long filaments for an hour's time after three military planes go over and possibly, possibly think it could be cattle bandages? I mean, it's crazy. The other thing is... There were three other independent eyewitness reports in, in Phoenix. We are 100 miles north of Phoenix. We're a high mountain area. Our elevation is a mile high. It's, you know, 5,400 plus feet. Phoenix is a, is a desert valley. Their climate doesn't support cattle. Um, and so they, they didn't mention that they had three people see the same. 
Um, and, you know, there are other people around the United States, Europe and Australia that are seeing the same exact things. Right. We're seeing persistent is- gaslighting. You know, the, the, it's a persistent gaslighting technique to tell you that you're not seeing what you are actually seeing. But uh, I mean, we have the Internet now. We ha- Everyone's got cameras on their phones and more and more people are actively uploading these things in real time. The planes are flying over. You're seeing them falling from the sky. And I mean, we can see the video of it. Those uh, they're glistening spider web like things right. everywhere on everything, right. coding everything. So as a reporter, as a news station, I mean, that's the air that you're living in as well. And your children are living in. Why wouldn't you want to get to the bottom of it? Why wouldn't you want to know what is being dropped in in your sky over your city. It just doesn't even make sense why people just want to continually lie to themselves, let alone the rest of the public. Mm -hmm. I always say, what if, to the doubters, what if it's real? What if your children are inhaling these heavy metals? It's, I just wouldn't take a chance. It doesn't make any sense. Right, exactly. We're already, we always report on just the dangers of these heavy metals in in your food and the dangers for pregnant women or for children who get these things in their vaccines. So here they are covering the entire sky or your organic garden, uh, you know, farm land and everything. So this is obviously something that affects us all. Uh, Ladies, where can people go to get some more information? I know you're working on a Facebook page specifically for people who have just more proof to lend to this movement. Right. Yes, the, um, we're looking for lab tests for blood um, from the fibers. I have to name the Facebook page. Oh, go ahead, Corey. The Facebook page is called Geoengineering Fallout Evidence. Okay. And so we would encourage people to go to that if they have also witnessed this, if they have photographs, if they have lab tests. Um, videos would be really helpful. Um, as a result of doing some of these interviews, other people have contacted us saying that they've seen the same, same thing. Yeah. Most interesting, Leanne, is um, a woman in uh, Tennessee who has witnessed this uh, for a year and one month in all seasons. She said, including below zero. So um, she she's the one that you, the video that you shot saw. You know, it was really good. It was that was a pretty good capture of what it looks like. So we, where we are, you know, yesterday we had a disappointment, not a surprise, but a disappointment where the congressman sent an email um, of the contact that he had from the EPA saying that the EPA saw the CBS report and felt that they could dismiss it. That you know, oh, that, it, that was a good conclusion. Can you imagine? <sighs> the EPA is, you know, our they are supposed to be. Our protection, right? And the scientists, they should not rely on a, you know, a a marginalized mainstream media report. Yeah, absolutely. That doesn't even have a scientist seeing if her theory is correct by (laughs) getting cattle uh, cattle bandages to see if it's the same material that she's dealing with. And you can Google geoengineering today. There's all sorts of articles today. Uh, You can see they're preparing people uh, for geoengineering. They're saying it's going to be the only thing that's going to help the environment. It's the only thing that's going to help us with global warming and that they need to start allowing these uh, programs to take place as if they aren't already. Um, so we see it's, it's, they know that there's, you know, just too many people that are aware of what is happening and are asking questions and aren't going to just believe that random spider webs fall out of planes. And that's totally normal. That's correct. Yes. They're conditioning the public Mm -hmm. to start to become familiar with the term geoengineering or weather modification or solar radiation management. Um, What they're, you know, like you said, they're they're not admitting that they've been using these programs since the 40s. They really amped up in the 90s and the last three years have been horrendous. Um, And uh, they, you know, geoengineering has been causal to a lot of our climate problems. Uh, You know, the droughts and the floods and so forth. Um, And, but they're trying to sell this as a fix. 
Exactly. And that's what, exactly what the BBC reported in November or even just yesterday. There's just all these reports. I've got them uh, pulled up, but that's what they're saying. This could be harmful to millions of people. We have no idea what they are putting in the sky or how it's going to affect our natural climate, uh, messing with the weather, or making clouds brighter or whatever they're doing. Uh, but the bottom line is we're quite aware that something is happening and we deserve to know the truth. We deserve to not be treated like children who are told that our eyes are deceiving us and that, you know, spider webs are now flying planes and <laughs> making these huge webs across the sky. Tell, tell me the name again of uh, the Facebook uh, group and we're going to go ahead and, and ask our viewers to, uh, to participate and send in their evidence. Thank you. Thank you. It's called geoengineering hyphen fallout evidence. Awesome. Well, ladies, thank you so much for, for being active in this and for calling all those 99 people. And that's what it takes. That is what it's going to take is for all of us to take some action and demand some answers. Thanks right. again. I'm not finished yet. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep working on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it for the show tonight. If you're watching this on YouTube, you know you can watch us at prismplanet.tv. Just become a subscriber and your username and password can be shared with up to 20 people at the same time. You're going to get instant access to all of our content. 18 years worth of content is there. And of course, you'll help support this operation. And Anything that you buy at the InfoWars store will also help us to run the InfoWars news media. We are running some huge specials right now. Uh, if you've wanted to try any of our InfoWars Life products, now is the time to do it. These make excellent stocking stuffers. And like I said, you help all of us to continue bringing us all of the news that you need to fight the info war. Thank you for tuning into the show tonight, and we'll see you here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game-changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.